And this isn't me coming from like upon high of like, I have found all of myself and I'm here to like, I'm not a fucking cult leader. <laughs> um, this is me saying like, I'm still on my journey. <laughs> isn't this rough and sucks? Yesterday I cried. So let's do it. Over identifying with identity. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I know I've, I like started this channel and then I went a little MIA, um, went in my hole to do more work and research and studies and so many notebooks of notes so that I can come back and talk about these topics confidently. And I can also be prepared for the backlash. People who have followed me on my other channel, they're aware of this, but for the newbies, I am a disruptor. <laughs> Hence the name, Disruptive Bodies. And so, you know, we are going to focus this channel instead of talking about just the hot topics in which everyone is talking about. Like, I do I do not want to talk about the Wednesday Adams Show or Elon Musk or, like, just all of the trending topics. What's going on now? I think there's something going on with, um, on the right... Oh, uh, God, I forget their name, but like Ben Shapiro and his fucking channel, like all that shit. I don't want to talk about that shit because all of that is a distraction and bullshit. And we are legit revolutionary anarchists over here. So we're going to take it back to basics and uh, regain our humanity by focusing on topics that allow us to regain our humanity because there is no revolution. We are not going to organize shit um, until we heal some of the personal traumas, generational traumas, till we have more leaders that are humble and have courage, um, you know, have been through some therape therapeutic self-individuation processes, and we are not in toxic, hierarchical, religious organizations. We need to really think of our political views, um, anarchy, um, you know, our spirituality, I'm pagan. Um, th those are not aspects of our lifestyle they are intimately part of who we are in our culture um that's why it's impossible to keep politics out of relationship with people because your politics does communicate your value systems right and your value system is important for when you're connecting with people because you want to have community with people who have shared value systems society is suffering an identity crisis right now and by identity crisis i do mean the traditional meaning of identity crisis of like who the fuck are we um i also mean where identity has become more important than humanity i'm, I'm gonna say that again where identity has become more important than humanity and when I speak of humanity, I speak of it almost as a, you know, synonym to empathy, to showing humanity, to being humane, human rights, right? Like your value systems on how you treat people. Valuing identity over humanity um, is dehumanizing. Especially when our identities these days are really just labels and categories for humans. I talk about this a lot behind, behind the scenes, but I can share it now. I'm so sick of having to list five or six different categories or labels for myself, like as an educator or um, when I'm like teaching or being on a podcast or have to give a bio and it's like the first part of the bio is this is who I fuck this is what my sexual parts are here's things I do this is the gods I follow here's my political views and that's not like those things influence who I am but that's not like my identity Right? Like, it's a part of it, but it's not it. Um, and we really, I feel like, and I felt like this for a long time. I love, like, I am so proudly queer. <laughs> but when I meet people, or like, again, it's not even meet people, because these aren't even normal things that, like, when you meet people just in everyday life friends, that we start out asking questions about, right? These are in professional 
like educational settings, right? Social media settings where people who you don't get to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with are trying to get to know you, right? And I and so I get the the purpose of it, right? To communicate all those things. But it also in the same time simplifies a human being down to just those categories without any um, intersections or nuance, right? And that's where we get stereotypes, right? Um, if you have a category, right? If you have a category of SJWs who are queer with purple hair, purple or blue hair, you're going to create a stereotype because you've categorized yourself, right? You've... Um, well, actually goes right into our next topic, which is belonging and othering, right? You've found belonging, right? But we haven't fully healed from the trauma of othering. And so when we find belonging in a community, these people are like me. We have similar categories and labels, right? Then we tend to other people who don't have those categories and labels to protect ourselves from possibly being abandoned from our new community of belonging or not feeling like we're belonging or to protect the community now that we belong in. So these things are all connected. It's my favorite, like, it's like my tagline. I may have to like change some of my channel's artwork to like, it's all connected. <laughs> Cause like, I feel like it's the thing I say the most when I'm trying to communicate some of my ideas, right? The over identifying with identity, right? The I'm, you know, I, I only hang out with these people who also identify with these labels, right? Because I feel like they're the only people who will be able to understand me instead of I will do the work and be a little bit uncomfortable in conversations to get to know people who aren't just in my categories because humans are beautiful and I don't want to be limited. For me personally, it sounds boring to only hang out with people that fit in my same exact categories. Because we, we watch similar things, we listen to similar things, like we have similar viewpoints. So it's really just um, becomes like a echo chamber of confirming our views instead of having friends that share some of those views and also have other views, right, that can help open our mind to other ideas. And it doesn't always mean that they have the wrong views, right? Sometimes both of us need to have communicated, have a conversation about something that either neither party like has enough information about to like fully have a good view. And that conversation, that friendship, that relationship is what helps us get to this new view, right? By combining those things together because it's all connected. So I think, I think we've suffered some trauma collectively in society coronavirus, um, Black Lives Matters protest, tons of violence in our media, right? That doesn't proportionately represent the violence going on in, in um, everyday, like in everyday life, right? It's heightened because you're seeing, you're seeing it in the media and it looks like this is happening all the time everywhere. It is more like our our mass shootings are getting more frequent. They are being targeted, but they're also being prioritized to create fear. Because fear can also can cause so many things, but it also can cause people to cling more to those labels and categories and other more in the attempt to protect their belonging in their community which is a natural reaction, a human reaction, and there's nothing abnormal or toxic about that. It's just how do you then protect your community and your people? Is it in a destructive way or in a productive way? Because societies have always been more successful by practicing belonging, um, creating belonging between um, you know, between other communities, um, 
than othering. Othering normally always leads to death and war <laughs> and rape and pillage, okay? And as someone who understands that as an arnic, as, as, as an ornic, as an, as an ornicist, as an anarchist, um, and someone who understands that like I'm, the extreme other side is rooted in hate. If I'm all the way on the opposite, then every of my, all of my practice needs to be rooted in love. And as someone who grew up in a very Christian cult, um, who understands that there are positive things that we can learn in all religions. One of the things that we used to say all the time is that they will know we are Christians by our love. And I'm going to um, co-opt, appropriate <laughs> that saying and say they'll know we're anarchist by our love and acceptance and by their feeling of belonging and safety and not othering. I am a big, I, I will always be a big advocate for the intersections um, of oppression that uh, I feel are important and I have advocated for, but I'm a humanist. And from my humanist point of view, I don't understand why our species is so, like why it's so important to label and categorize and other um, differences in our species when we should be celebrating them because they're beautiful. Like, differences, uniqueness, a little flaw in something, uh, something different, that's what makes, you know, this head, shoulders, arms, legs, that, uh, you know, that is the form of human, it's what makes mine unique. You know, like, I have dimples, right? That makes me unique. It doesn't mean that I should only talk to other people who have dimples. You know what I mean? Um, it doesn't mean that I should over identify with my dimples, <laughs> right? It's actually better if I just let them be and let other people notice them. That's why I don't really point them out most of the time. This was just a teaching lesson. After the revolution, if we're successful, all these different types of people with all these different labels and categories are still going to exist. And I hope that we'll be healthy enough as humans at that point to not then like segregate ourselves by race. <laughs> like I do understand creating community based on again, shared values, shared values and shared like lifestyle you'd like to live. We've got to get away from needing to other certain people to f to fully feel safe and belong and, and, and feel that sense of belonging within our own community. And instead, remember what it felt like when we finally got that sense of belonging and we should want to share that joy with every other human we can, right? Like, uh, humans are suffering collectively. I know, like, you know, most of us have learned to deal with a certain amount of suffering because that's just how you you know survive in this world but like i would like to lower that like i think that's the point is to have less suffering more choice right and i think understanding that the psychology behind why when we're in you know still healing and in trauma places we react this way we need to do we need to other people to feel that belonging and where that comes from? I just think it's important for us to understand that because I, again, how are you gonna create an organized communities and societies from the ground up, collectivist spaces, or uh, what is the word I'm looking for? A collective, right? That's going to work with other communities and other collectives. We're gonna have to get over this labeling and categorizing and belonging and othering and debating for destruction. <laughs> All of the things that I talk about tonight require patience in, and curiosity in acquiring understanding. Hopefully that wasn't too big of a mouthful. Patience in 
and curiosity in acquiring understanding. It's also like something that is collectively making society sick right now. This is why we are, you know, cancel culture has gotten out of control. This is why we have people over identifying with mental health disorders. It is a symptom of a society that is full of individuals who don't actually really know who they are because we haven't ever been given the space, freedom, time to really explore that um, because it takes that time, right? And this isn't me coming from like upon high of like, I have found all of myself and I'm here to, like, I'm not a fucking cult leader. <laughs> um, this is me saying like, I'm still on my journey. <laughs> Isn't this rough and sucks? Yesterday I cried.